What's going on team? It's your boy G. We back at it again with another movie review. In today's episode, we're going to be covering John Wick chapter 4, bro. This has been years in the making. I recently saw the rest of the John Wicks. That's, you know, uh, 1 and 2. Because originally, I only saw 3, you know. And man, this one, it blew me away. It blew me away. But before we get into that, the main question I had going into this movie was... How is this going to be different from the first three? There's a stigma of, you know, you've seen one John Wick movie, you've seen them all type beats. So with this being the fourth installment, how are they going to make me care? How are they going to make this one stand out above all the rest? And I got to say, bro, this movie was insane from start to finish. Like literally they blew up the continental New York within like the first five minutes of the movie, bro. Like they set the tone immediately. And you know what they say, man, if it's not broke, don't fix it. We were in for a John Wick revenge tour like, like no other, bro. And a great freaking way to start off the movie. And then don't even get me started about the Osaka, Japan continental because that drum was lit like just from an aesthetic standpoint the lights the freaking combat scene the introduction of the final boss like we got so many things that set up this movie within the first 10 to 15 minutes i was hooked bro i was so excited because with this movie they made every fight epic and it made every single moment matter which could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you look at it because i feel like this movie does have some pacing issues but i don't think it's to the detriment of the actual film itself because with john wick 4 they literally just lean into just making it more john wick more enemies more guns more fighting more cars more dogs like everything that you know john wick to be they turn up a whole nother notch so for me I love how they just kept innovating and kept me guessing throughout the film. And then when it comes to the motivation for each party involved, like this is where this movie separates from a lot of the other ones because they made it so clear what everybody's intentions were and what their reasoning was for this whole thing to go down. From the Grand Marquis to Winston to Kane to John Wick, like literally everybody in the mix had their motivations clear and set out on the table. And we were just along for the ride. So this design was freaking dope, bro. Let's get into the character breakdown because y'all know this be my favorite part. <laughs> All right, man, let's start out with the star of the show. John Wick, Keanu Reeves, man. The one-liners are on point. And on the Why I'm Geek podcast with Chris, he told me that um, they actually did the math on the amount of lines that John Wick has in this movie. And they said, like, about every word that Keanu Reeves spoke on this movie was worth, like, 40 grand, bro. That's, that's freaking crazy. Because I know John Wick don't do a lot of talking. But he bought that action and his performance was freaking amazing. Like for how long each sequence was, it was literally breaking down the enemies, bro, from top to bottom. And this new fighting style that I'm a coin as Gun Krav Maga because every enemy, every rogue was kitted from top to bottom. So most of the time they're not going down in one shot so he was literally using the inertia from the bullets to set up his grabs and set up his combos and they really set up each sequence as like a one shot and it wasn't a whole bunch of cuts that you would like you know come to expect in an action movie which was a really refreshing thing to see because you could really tell like how much time and effort Keanu Reeves put into this character and really learning how to put somebody down, bruh. So that John was freaking amazing because he was really flowing. Don't even get me started about the nunchucks. The nunchucks was like my favorite part initially, bruh. Because you could tell like he was literally like warming up as he got going and then by the end, like he was Bruce Lee with them jumps, bruh. That John was sick. But next, I got to talk about Kane or Danny Yen because if I could describe Kane in one word, it would just be elite, bruh. Like this man is really like that because his presence for one was so unique and it was like whimsical and it's something that we haven't really seen before in the franchise you could bond that with his backstory it set up some immaculate moments that i won't forget because for one this man is blind and he's literally out here going crazy using doorbell sensors as targets to basically mop the floor with anybody he come in contact with bro like Kane was special and I'm definitely hoping that he gets a spinoff eventually because we need to see more bro the next person I wanted to talk about was the Grand Marquis because because Bill Skarsgård is really like he's really good bro like I didn't know him by name before this like I've seen him before obviously right but never really put a name to the face type B and you might think I'm crazy for that but I just you know I know now and that's what I'm trying to say like he is the best big bad 
dad we have ever seen in a John Wick movie hands down his ambition to take the opportunity that the table has presented him by not only taking out john wick but also taking out the idea of john wicks because at this point john wick is a legend everything he touches has to burn that's his whole philosophy right now and with the table failure is not an option so it's that drive that you know really melts off the screen and was really freaking good bro like it gave me joker vibes had the tension in the room so high because you didn't know what he was going to do but overall man freaking great performance and then you combine that with winston and ian mcshane because they were like a sort of meeting of the minds you know old and the young and winston is a character that at this point in the series bro like i kind of despise him because at the end of the day He's always looking out for number one, and that's him and his hotel, right? He was so focused on that, and I really think he's like a master manipulator, the way that he was able to finesse John to basically come back and work for him after he shot him off a building. It's absolutely ridiculous, bro, and nobody else seems to feel the same way. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but regardless of what he said about Sharon, like, I'm just not really rocking with Winston like that. Don't get me wrong. It was definitely big brain as far as, like, what he added to the plot, but person to person, bruh, I'm not really trusting him right now. <laughs> but the next person I want to talk about is the tracker or, to me, Mr. Nobody. That, that, that name is hard. I don't know what it was about that, but when he said that, I was like, oh, I rocks with you. I rocks with you. But Shamir Anderson, the coolest freaking anti-hero to enter the whole John Wick universe, bro. Because not only did he have a cool dog, but he was fully equipped to engage with everybody. Like he was always prepared. Now, another reason why I mess with him is because he kind of had his own style to like the way he moves and how he fights from the way he uses his dog to like the marksman rifle that he has that he breaks down so quick and it was just like at any moment he just snipes somebody bro it's freaking crazy but to me the the most intriguing thing about him was that he had the ability to track john wick so well like what's in that freaking book bro like it was sketches it was drawings it was research like and he had his own style to fighting which was freaking amazing and it was kind of like we were seeing kane and john wick in their younger years because at the end of the day, they all still had that same level of camaraderie and knowing at the end of the day, it's just the job, bro. You know what I'm saying? But but at the same time, dog people stick together. So <laughs> next, we got to talk about the Bowery King, bro. Lawrence Fishburne, because, because I feel like they did him dirty, bro. Like the reason why I say that is because he was acting his butt off in the scenes that he got. Don't get me wrong. But the two instances we saw him what was he doing delivering john wick some laundry bro like yo the way that the third movie ended had me thinking like him and john wick was kind of in this thing together i'm not sitting here expecting him to go out here and catch bodies or anything but but it just seemed like they were supposed to be together and they kind of just replaced them with winston but the next two people i want to talk about is the father and daughter duo from osaka japan and the continental there which is shimazu and akira or hiroki sanada and Rina Sawayama. Hopefully I pronounced that right. But I love their bond as you know, father and daughter in this movie. And Shimaza's fight with Kane set the tone for how formidable Kane is as the final boss, right? And you combine that with how different Osaka fights as a collective, the Osaka arc was going crazy, bro. And I hope at like some capacity, Akira gets some type of spin-off because I really, really liked her character and we didn't get to spend that much time with her. And the way she was talking to John Wick, bro, like Kane versus Akira could go crazy. But but next, I got to talk about Killer. That's his name, literally, Killer. He was played by Scott Atkins, who's somebody I'm not really that familiar with, but I love his character because this man was moving crazy, like literally crazy, bro. He built like a combination of the penguin and kingpin, but he was graceful as a gazelle out there. He was kicking like nobody's business, bro. Now, if you ask me, this segment of the movie was a little too long because like I said earlier, like every fight, they made it super epic, but this junk just seemed like it was never going to end. It was definitely the most drawn out fight, even though the setup was cool because it served a plot in a way that, you know, we got a little bit of Easter eggs as far as like who John was prior to all these movies, but the interaction was dope nonetheless. And lastly, I can't forget Sharon or Lance Riddick. Um, RIP to a goat, man, because, you know, he's a man of many talents and voices from the big screens to TV to video games. Like literally, this man is a legendary talent, bro. 
And it was definitely a little eerie seeing how things ended up for him in this movie because of his recent passing. But I love the way that they talked about him in this movie and the way he went out, he was doing what he does best and, and that was being an honorable friend. It just felt like a great send off. Um, so much respect to him and to his family. But other than that, that's all I got for the character breakdown, man. Let's get into the plot. All right, so this movie was good, right? But I did feel some fatigue throughout this movie. From the car chase in Paris to the whole Russia killer arc that had the longest fight for no reason. But because of those things, we got a cool insight to some of the table and, you know, different family lores that we weren't really privy to prior to this. So there's some level of equivalent exchange happening, but getting to see the Russians in John Wick's past was really cool. And then you combine that with Kane's history and the safety of his daughter. The table is vicious, bro. Like they, they really don't care about nobody but the table. So from a narrative point, I was locked in from the jump. But the only issue that I really had with the final arc and uh, you could chalk this up to just being, you know, action movie thing was that they put a timetable on things like I wish that they never said 6.05 a.m. or said, you know, we got like five minutes left. Like I wish that they would have just said sunrise instead of giving a specific time because it just made things less believable. And they was basically on Namek time. Like if you know anything about Dragon Ball Z and Planet Namek, five minutes took like three to five episodes. Like it was ridiculous. But not only that, but you combine that with these gigantic stairs that he has to climb within like two minutes. And there's like hundreds of enemies on there. Like, don't get me wrong. That scene was immaculate. Like I loved everything about it. But at some points, it just takes away from the tension because it's like, yo, no way this is happening. But one thing that I've talked about a little bit before was the motivations and the stakes in this movie. And for all parties involved, they were pretty high, you know, whether it was family, revenge, money, power, status, like it didn't matter because everything was riding on this. The future of the table, the future of John Wick as a franchise, like this has been building up for the last three movies. So the way that they were able to continue to find ways to make each encounter different from the last, it was, was just like peak fiction, bro. And I just love, I loved every second of it. Like when I tell you, it literally took a seamless transition. Like I feel like it was one shot where it started off focusing solely on John Wick and then slowly expanded for us to see like literally the floor plan of the building seeing how all these different characters are interacting and anticipation of them meeting their demise with this fire breath shotgun mr nobody's dog and john wick going crazy bro like it was so freaking dope and then the music behind it too was very like video game like it was like i was watching something from call of duty bro it was freaking crazy one of the craziest things i've seen in theaters by far and then from a narrative standpoint the marquis idea of getting rid of the idea of john wick takes everything to an extreme that i don't think we were really expecting because it's just like when you go to a john wick movie you pretty much know what's going to happen not specifically but just like we've seen this before right but doing little things like giving everybody john wick jackets and making it even more difficult for him to get by everybody like it was it was a freaking masterpiece bro and then lastly like the the movie itself was so fast paced for the majority of it but then it was slowed down for you know for certain scenes that required dialogue that really brought everything full circle and then it will ramp right back up again and finally like for the final arc or final act of the movie they completely slow it down and drag it out in a way that has you as a viewer like what what is going to happen like that puts you in a state of anxiousness or curiosity because you just don't know how it's going to end they they really created some epic moments with this slow burn type of content bro it was freaking elite bro like i'm trying to tell y'all but let's get into my final thoughts because i can keep going bro, this movie has surpassed my expectations it's not just another john wick movie and there's two things that i will never forget one is the stair fight bro because we're already on a roller coaster and this man gets all the way up the freaking stairs just to fall back down bro oh that 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 took me out that took me out bro and then 
The other thing was the Kane and Mr. Nobody team up, bro. Like that was freaking epic. It was like I was seeing the Avengers come together for the first time, bro. <laughs> All I can say now, bro, is just like, you know, revenge is one hell of a drug, bro. Like this is the best action franchise of all time. No kizzy. Like, I, I, I'm going to just say that. I'm not going to talk too much about the post credit scene because I feel like you just have to see it. But it has me excited for the future of the John Wick universe. And by that, I mean spinoffs. So hopefully we get some of those, whether it's a prequel or we step into somebody else's story. Who knows, bro? As far as a G-File score for this joint, I got to give it a 9.5 out of 10. The only reason why this wasn't a 10 in my book was the pacing issues. Like, there was definitely times in this movie where i started dozing like i'm not even gonna cap to you like these action sequences are really great i don't want to take anything away from it but they're long bro and when you're seeing not the same thing but similar things for a long period of time your mind starts to wander and that's all i'm gonna say that's all i'm gonna say but other than that this movie was freaking great and worth seeing in theaters i already dropped my worth it video but might as well say here too but if you enjoyed the video man please please hit that like button hit that subscribe button these videos take a long time to make and i appreciate all the new subs and movie club members so other than that, I'm going to holler at y'all in the next video, man. Y'all be easy. You know the vibes. Always keep growing. See you going. It's me, boy. G. I'm gone.